drove the whole thing in terms of development. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to come because of an illness in the family, but all, all, practically all credit goes to him. Um, I basically brought up the issue with him, and then he developed these things in 12 we weekends of uh, personal time, zero budget, and we just did this as a, as a, as a demonstrator project. So uh, the pain that started everything was that public health entities around the world, even in the US, do not have the information technology resources and infrastructure necessary for building robust applications for disease su surveillance. Um, birth defect surveillance systems are few and far between. Uh, the reason why we st started on this was because of a, uh, and this is one of the reports in CNN that recently came up, but previously there was a report in uh, another uh, newspaper which talked about birth defects in China because of all the industrialization and all the industrial pollutants and so on. Um, and uh, there was a colleague of mine who asked if there was such a thing as a birth defect surveillance system. And I said, uh, and knowing the, the uh, situation, uh, even in the US, there are hardly any birth defect surveillance systems, full-fledged surveillance systems. So decided to use that as an excuse for building out a uh, surveillance system which is ostensibly for birth defects, but it can, can be used for or reconfigured for other things. So it was an open source um, um, and crowdsourced surveillance system. Uh, I don't know if anybody has heard about ProMed Mail, but this was a listserv that started back in the 90s as a listserv. And basically the model for that, and I have the um, QR codes if you want to get to those sites. Um, and it basically used a system of uh, crowdsourcing uh, around the world for reporting infectious diseases. The criteria there was not to, uh, in, to, um, to, to look into the qualifications of the people who reported it, but encourage multiple people to report from similar areas so that there's a peer review that happens on the system itself. So if there's a false report or a report that's uh, slightly defective, then somebody else from the similar area would then be able to correct it. And there's a discussion board that's associated with it. So um, ProMed is a pretty uh, substantial piece of uh, international disease surveillance system. Um, and it's, of course, now they've got a mapping interface and so forth with it. but. It's, it's one of the six uh, sources that the WHO uses, for example, for, for, daily, um, um, for a daily look at what's going on in the world in terms of infectious disease. So using that as a, as a, uh, as a background and a formula, uh, we decided to use cloud computing, enable global reporting of some of the parameters around birth defects. And like I said, I use birth defects just as a, uh, an excuse to build the system. So this is for birth defects, but then you can imagine that it could be for any other, especially for chronic diseases. See, for infectious diseases, everyone jumps on it, like MERS, for example, CDC jumps on it, and they catch every patient, and then they follow them up, intensely stare at them, and put them into isolation units and so on. But for chronic diseases, after a while, everybody just kind of gets used to it, and you don't really have robust surveillance systems for chronic disease. Birth defects is one such. I mean, it's even though it's an acute manifestation, it's still you know, it's an insidious thing that happens all over the place. And uh, by the time uh, it comes to the consciousness of anybody, um, it, it, it passes. So um, this was done in 12 days of weekend time uh, with a zero budget and using an open source model. And the code for the open source, the, the whole uh, surveillance system can be downloaded in, from this site. And again, I have QR codes for that. So the design elements were, it's a crowdsourced reports with a registration interface. So you can it's log in. It's got a login function. Uh, preserve the confidentiality of patients. This is, again, uh, things that you have to face up to in uh, health. Uh, and so we used a spatial aggregation of data. And I'll show you some of the screenshots that we used to solve those kinds of issues. You need to preserve the confidentiality of reporters as well, because when someone reports a birth defects, a birth defect somewhere, say, in a factory in China, or near it, uh, they don't want to be exposed to the ire of, uh, of the government or whatever it is that comes after them if they start reporting stuff. So we wanted to preserve the confidentiality of reporters as well. Um, and for that, we have an encrypted password protection and aliased email links to the reporter. And then there was a peer, re peer review of reports is, again, a methodology which is similar to what is there in ProMed in the sense that uh, anybody else can um, can look at uh, some of those reports and see whether they're substantial, substantiatable or not. And so that those are some of the design elements that were in the design. 
It was built as a generic model. Like I said, it, birth defects is only an excuse, but you can uh, tweak it to uh, include other diseases or, or make it work for other diseases. Uh, there's a registration and login and access to different functions of the interface based on the role and its relationship to the data entry and retrieval. Uh, inputting points and irregular polygons on a worldwide map spatially representing occurrence of disease or events. Uh, we use the polygons for inputting the, uh, uh, the ostensible suspected environmental hazard um, in, on a map. Then association of attribute data to these points and polygons and all registered users uh, to view aggregated data. So one way of preserving confidentiality of patients and their location and confidentiality of patients includes location. So in, in healthcare, we, ha we are handicapped by the fact that we have, well, I call it handicapped because in other um, situations, you don't have an issue displaying points because in health, points are considered as, as betraying confidentiality. And so we have to work within that. And so uh, what I did, what we did was to create an aggregated data view, which is then drillable based on, uh, and I'll show you, uh, it is drillable and uh, you can uh, contact the person who reported it in order to get the real data if they want to share it with you. Um, and then searching information spatially, spatially and tabularly and have it returned for further interaction. Contacting via an aliased email link. So that alias email link was to preserve the confidentiality of the reporter. The original submitter of the information for further interaction, establishment of peer contacts, and initiation of offline collaborative effort. So if I was interested in somebody, some some birth defects, say spina bifida that had been reported in a certain place, then I'd be able to get to the alias email link of the person reporting it, I'd click on it, send that person an email, give them my contact information, and if that person then wanted to share it with you, then they could. And uh, so that's the, some of the rules of the game as, as it was set up. Uh, and then downloading users, uh, your own data. So it actually could be a repository for your own data. If you submitted a whole lot of birth defects data, you can access it anytime and download it anytime, along with all the lat longs. So that when you placed a point on the map, you also got a latitude longitude that was uh, attributed to it. And this is all done under, in Google uh, Apps. Um, right, so all registered users can view the aggregated data on a worldwide geographic grid to gain an overview of the situation. Um, that is an aggregated view I mentioned earlier. It is aggregated to a one degree by, initially a 10 degree by 10 degree lat long, and then as you zoomed in, it became one degree by one degree. Uh, searching the information spatially and, and have it returned, contacting via, hmm, um, and then downloading it. This seems to have repeated itself, I'm sorry. The work, so the, um, these are all the um, URLs, and like I said, uh, I have some uh, QR codes here for you to use if you want to get to these, uh, to these URLs. And uh, these are some of the things that were used in it. And again, I'm not the developer. These are all um, verbiage from uh, Dr. Rajaram, who developed these. And he used these various pieces to, to, to build the system. Now this is, I have here, again, if you have a uh, smartphone, you can get to this uh, login screen or login uh, URL. But basically, this is the interface. Um, um, and what you're seeing now is the aggregated squares within which reports have been, play, have, been, have been generated for the birth defects. And you have a login screen out there and a registration screen. So if you need to first register before you can log in. Um, and then, of course, uh, there's also in, instructions can be downloaded in, in a PDF format. So that, and then there are a few tools here. This is the Google Map um, interface. There are a few tools here. This is the pan tool. This is an erase tool. And I think this, this is a full extent tool. So we created these tools to go with the manipulation of the map, other than the zoom, of course, and, the, and, the, and these uh, directional tools. And a bunch of different things, including hazards, which you can select. You can search for the hazards without logging in. So it is meant for anybody who can have a look at it. Um, and then there are a few other things like searching persons and adding a person and adding an environmental hazard and adding a birth defect type. Now the search of persons and adding a person um, and adding a birth defect type depends on login. So you need to be logged in registered for doing that. Uh, registration is uh, pretty standard. You get this little dialogue here. And you have error trap. Uh, so it says uh, password is invalid characters and so forth. And then uh, there's an error trapping for if the username exists. And then uh, once you've logged in, 
um, then you can add a person and then this is the interface for the person you've got. Uh, this gets auto-filled based on, on a point that you place. Now notice that on the tools here there's no point tool and the reason for that is that we would like the person to zoom into a certain level where you have certain accuracy of placing the point. If you place the point at with this zoom in level it can be many hundreds of miles off from where the person actually intended to have it. So the point tool was made to be um, uh, scale dependent. Um, the, the visibility of the point tool and the functionality of the point tool was made to be scale dependent. Uh, you need to put in the date of birth of the person and then there's a drop down list of about nine of these birth defects which were deemed to have been of importance by CDC but also you have the ability to add a new type if you wanted to add it if it's not on the list. Um, and uh, right, so then you can search, search the, you can select the birth defect from the list and add and add it. You know, date of birth, and what you what you're doing is adding a person, and you save the person, and this would be whoever you are logged in as. And unfortunately, I don't have this. Uh, you know, what happens is if you're not logged in, I think it gives you a uh, error. Um, anyway, this thing is a little out of sequence, but it does give you error. It says uh, you you can't put in the data. Um, and then adding a new birth defect type would be that you use that that uh, button. And this is how the new birth defect type would be where you would actually specify what that birth defect type is and so on. So you put a code in, an ICD code and so on for it. And you're adding a new birth defect to that list. Um, I believe, uh, right, so there's no point um, input tool yet and I've been logged in here and I'm trying to enter the information and if I click on save person at this, I don't have a tool to, to actually input the data. So it only appears after you've zoomed in to a certain level and this is settable in the code. So here's the tool finally and then when you actually click on the point, it, it uh, uh, populates the lat long on it. And after which you can save the person once you've uh, designated these things, uh, the type of birth defect and so on. Um, now, the polygon tool, um, you can use the polygon tool to actually add a hazard. And so, um, so that's the polygon tool that's in there. Um, and then choose what's known as a North American uh, industrial code system code for the various birth, for the various industrial codes. So like I said, I've just used this as an example for putting in a polygon that's associated with a point or its proximity. Um, I know, for example, in India, there was a whole lot of tanning industries that would just indiscriminately pour the effluents into agricultural fields. And you had whole lay, uh, vast swaths of fields that were laid waste. And I can imagine how you'd want to sort of be able to report that. And so, uh, so these codes are just meant to sort of standardize what these industries are. And it, these are known as the North, in, North American industrial codes. Um, one can search. Uh, by uh, here's the current user's data. So if you searched your, only your data, you'd get only your data returned back. Or else you have the usual search criteria and you can add others if you need to. But this is a date from and date to and a birth defect type or all types. And you can do a search and, um, and it should return a list of, uh, of all the entries there. I think we asked for all, but here it is. And along with that are two links on each row. Each one of these is one birth defect. And it has a map link and a mail email link. Now the map link, if you click on it, it'll zoom into that particular grid into, in which it is, it is found at the aggregation grid. But if, then if you click on the email link, you'll then be able to get to the author of the, uh, the, the reporter of the defect. So, uh, okay, so this is the email link and you basically say stuff, you know, I mean, whatever it is that you need. This is loose text, loose format that we've had. But in a future uh, iteration, you can always uh, fine tune this sort of thing about, you can have drop downs and so on. But this is basically a email to whoever it was in Northern Australia that I'd like to access more details of the cases, the reported view and, and blah. And there's my email, please get in touch with me. This is again meant to preserve the confidentiality of the person who's report, who has reported the case. Because you can't really identify them for all the various reasons because these are sensitive topics and you never know who will go after whom. So we didn't want to do that. And uh, then again searching by hazards, you put the Nike's code and you can search by, by the hazards and again that will also return similar things. You know, the map and the, and the email. 
Now the limitations, um, there are some limitations to uh, working with Google and I'll, uh, the first of course is that uh, on the kinds of queries supported. Again, all of this, um, developers would be better uh, cognizant of all of this stuff. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, a developer like I said. So these are some of the things that Rajaram had mentioned with regard to the limitations while he was trying to develop this. I have a, a handout here and I think there are about 10 or so copies. So if you'd like to have the full abstract or the full paper, it's in here, in which he talks more about these things. Um, and apparently he overcame the limitation by using this open source uh, search engine Lucene and using Compass APIs. Anytime the relevant text fields in an entity like a defect or environmental hazard are updated, they're automatically indexed. Um, and then versioning was an issue. Now the Polygon tool doesn't work in the current one and that's because it was a version two and this is the error message that we got. So it does require a little bit of maintenance. It's not entirely uh, uh, um, um, developer f uh, free. I mean, it's not entirely um, non-developer friendly, let's say. So from version two to version three, when Google uh, Maps changed their various things, um, then um, the Polygon tool won't work, so it had to be reworked, and he hasn't had the time to rework it. So that's a limitation for sure. I mean, I, we didn't know that when we developed it, but when Google changed it from version two to three, that's what happened. The Polygon wouldn't work, and I couldn't fix it. So it needed the developer to do it. Uh, it anyway, pros are it's trivial to get an application built and deployed and made available on the web, ideal for low-budget organizations to get useful applications deployed with pay-as-you-use approach especially if you consider the large number of open source libraries available at your disposal to build apps. And the cons are you can put in safeguards, but ultimately you must trust Google with the data. So that's the other confidentiality issue is that a lot of health folks would not like to have the idea of Google um, keeping the data on their stores. And of course, then the versioning issue was another con. Um, and then here's my acknowledgments um, and, and a disclaimer. Um, I did this apart from my work in the Pennsylvania Department of Health, and I have to put that disclaimer down that they're not responsible for any opinions or, or uh, whatever I might say about the Department of Health. <laughs> and if you wish to contact me, it's, uh, those are my contact information. And if you wish to contact Dr. Ganeshan, then that's his email address. And um, thank you. And if you have any questions.